My name is Joseph Kadat. I'm a writer and a game master and an editor and a bunch of other things. My wife has my tripod, so we're going to try with my shaky hands to do this. And I have had an accident shaving, so you get to look at something much prettier today. Now, everybody who has ever played a role-playing game has come across this problem, which is what to do when you don't have a full set of players. This is probably the single most common problem. And I don't know if this is recording or not. Okay, there. Uh, and even if you insist on having a quorum before you start, you're still gonna have a lot of people who don't show up. So you're gonna end up with sessions where out of five players, three are there, which is my most common scenario, or two out of four people show, or such like this. So what do you do? Well, first thing you do is that player character's player, uh, by not showing up, has given you leave to do whatever you want to their player character. Uh, personally, don't be too brutal uh, unless they've given you cause. Easiest thing to do is have that character go back to town or stay on a boat that you guys happen to have or protect the cart or so on and do tasks which are mostly maintenance oriented with regards to what the players need done anyways such as doing research which is actually a really good choice because then you can give them special secret information that they can share later on if they so choose with the rest of the group. Um, doing maintenance work because God knows all this equipment needs to be oiled, sharpened, etc. Uh, repaired. Horses need to be fed. Engines need to be fueled, etc., etc., etc. Maybe schmooze around town. This is another good choice because it allows you to give that person who eventually shows up side quests which you can give to which they can give to the rest of the team Pe things that they found out about from the local priests or nobles or uh, just people they met in a bar for the players to do give the players more options that way and more ways into the story and rounding out the town so those are three options you can take I have done all of them. Um, I will probably do more. One player who couldn't show up all the time uh, because her job changed, although I don't know if she knows it yet, but she will now, is now the artificial intelligence of the airship that the other players use. So she's always there, even if she's not actually there. Um, and that works as well, especially for players who don't show up for long stretches and you know ahead of time that that's going to be the case. If they can't show up for long stretches you may want to see about recruiting other players because you will never have all your players together for more than one or two sessions in a row if they're adults and if they have jobs and if they have families. That's just the nature of the beast. Now. What do you do if all these people who are missing are actually crucial to the game? Which, if you have a well-balanced party, will be the case. Here's what you do. You make NPCs, which are developed in their own right, and you allow the other players, the ones who are there, to pick from a pool of NPCs who are accompanying them. And usually just one, maybe two if you have a very small group of people uh, who can fulfill the needs of the group if, say, your cleric Now, this doesn't mean that they should supplant 
a player who is a cleric, but that they should be developed enough to be interesting, they should have their own persona, etc. But they should primarily be in control of the people who actually show up as well. Um, I, in my experience, you're going to need at least a knowledge cleric and a rogue because those are your two best utility players uh, tagging along. And if, even if everybody else is gone, you're always going to, or even if everybody else is there, you're always going to need, and you're always going to need something snuck around and stolen. So do those depending upon the nature of the group. You may always want to have some sort of tank character like a fighter or a paladin. You may always want to have a warlock if you're dealing with cultists and so on. All in all, if you do this, you can round out the rest of your team, and while you will miss the people who are not there, because hopefully they're your friends, or at least friendly with you, the story can continue. This leads to one further thing, which is you need to write down what has happened, especially if this is a regular occurrence, which it probably will be for a lot of you. So there should be a story thus far document or something similar where you go over with the players what happened and you put it in writing so that people who weren't there can read it. It doesn't have to be terribly in depth, it doesn't have to be well written, it just has to be there for anybody to get caught up if they need to. And that simple outline can do the job. Finally, Make sure everybody knows that this is the sort of thing that's happening because they all should be on board with it. Most people I've found have been on board and they can develop a lot of affection for these non-player characters who are tagging along with. One thing I caution is that if you do a lot of role-playing, the primary role-playing characters should not be these non-player characters. If you do a lot of role playing, persuasion shouldn't be done by some by a character which is owned by no one. Instead, the people who are talking should be actual players. That's pretty much the only caution I've needed to give you though. Um, enjoy playing your games and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Take care.